I want to talk from this subject. I know that was a little lengthy in terms of the reading, but read it in your spare time. Let's fight this giant together. Let's fight this giant together. Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name and we give you all the glory and all the praise. There's none like you. Master, it is not I, but it's the Christ. Speak for thy servant heareth. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's fight this giant together. Many of us probably have our own personal giants that we deal with. Uh, we don't know all of them, but sometimes there are things that are going on in our lives, personal feelings. Sometimes it can be a giant in your life. Sometimes lack of finances can be a giant in your life. Sometimes, you know, uh, unemployment can be a giant in your life, you know, and other issues that you might deal with. And so many of us deal with our own personal giants. However, I don't want you to be dismayed and I don't want you to be unhappy. But there is a giant that sits right in the midst of us sometimes that we have to deal with. And that giant is sin. And sometimes it is found among the people of God and we have to deal with this giant that so often threatens us and sometimes is so pervasive that it makes us back off or back down from the fight that we're in. This is spiritual warfare and it's so important for us to understand that we've got to fight. You've got to fight. But I want you to know that your weapons of this warfare is not carnal. And so it's not with sword and spears and knives. It's not with your fist and it's not with your tongue. Amen? Uh, it is spiritual. It's a spiritual battle that we're dealing with. And so when it comes to sin, it just doesn't matter who it captures. It doesn't matter who it, uh, you know, uh, uh, con uh, consumes. It just doesn't matter for sin is found, unfortunately, in the camp. And we have to deal with that sin. Amen? And so I, I come to challenge us. I want us to really, really, really deal with some of these giants that, uh, we have, amen, and especially the giant of sin. It is huge. And, and sometimes, you know, um, and I just really want to talk, you know, sometimes there's so, so much dissension and, and differences sometimes in the body of Christ that it just doesn't cause us to come together like we should, amen? And so we've got to really deal with that. We've really got to deal with it and not let it separate us because we all have the same, we have one objective, and that's really, we're, we're trying to get to heaven, isn't that right? And, and so no matter what our differences may be and no matter what our dislikes may be, we've got to learn how to keep the focus on our objectives and keep on fighting for what is right and that is to destroy sin in the camp, amen? And even, it's, even when it's in our own per, per, uh, personal lives, because sin will ultimately cost you something, amen? Some of us kind of know that. Thank God for his delivering power. Many of us, you know, have heard the message, it's time to kill your giant. We've heard that message, and we pray that you're dealing with your own giants that you deal with, and we know that you uh, do have the power to kill those giants if you want them to die. Amen? And so we want you to deal with your personal giants because often the personal giants uh, seem to affect your relationships. If you're not careful, those personal giants will destroy good relationships with people. If you're not careful, those personal giants will even destroy you yourself if you're not careful. So you have to watch those giants. Uh, you don't have to you know, take my word for it. Get in the scripture, okay? Uh, we've heard the story about David, and we've heard the story about the type of character he had. First of all, David was a very responsible young man, and I want to talk to the youth. Uh, you can't be flippant and silly in a day like today. You've got to have integrity in a day like today, because what will happen if you're not careful, you know, it will, it will, it will affect your future if you're not careful, amen? Amen. Sometimes you can do things that could get you in trouble for the rest of your life. And it will take the Lord to deliver you. But David was a responsible young man. But not only that, David was a committed and a dedicated young man. No matter what his father said, do, go watch the sheep. We know that he cared for the sheep. 
he cared for the sheep, and he was very careful about what he did. Amen? And so it is said that here we have a situation where the enemy, the Philistines, always was an enemy of Israel. They decided, and this wasn't the first time, that they wanted to cause war with Israel. They wanted to cause war. Sometimes as soon as you're, you feel you're okay and you're pacing real good in your life, all of a sudden here comes the enemy who rears his head to challenge your very own integrity when it comes to walking with God. That's why it's so important for you to know who you are in God. Know that you are somebody special. And so the Philistines did not leave the children of Israel alone. One of the reasons was they knew that they were God's people. And so don't you fret. The enemy know that you're a child of God. I don't care what you're doing. Even if you're kind of stepping out of the will of God, the enemy know that you belong to the Lord. He knew, they knew that these were God's children. And so when they, you know, when they felt like it, they decided to cause war. And it is said that they, the Philistines had thousands of soldiers and footmen. This is what it says, but I don't care how many soldiers the enemy have, uh, the Lord has some angels that watch over you and take care of you. So you don't have to fear them. And I want to try to make this story short because it, it just encourages me every time. You know, I read the scripture here. Uh, the Philistines declared war. When you read the scripture, you will see that they were on two different mountains, two different hills, rather. You had the children of Israel on one, and you had the Philistines on the other. And then the Bible says that there was a valley in between them. And so here they are. And the Bible says that the Philistines taunted them for 40 days. You know, that's something, you know, uh, I think I kind of shared with you all this story right quick. Let me share it with you. I was in, uh, I think, about the sixth grade when I went to New York to stay. I was in the sixth grade, and I remember, you know, I didn't know anything about fighting. I was just a little old, you know, girl. Who, I didn't know nothing. And so here, I knew nothing about fighting. And so all of a sudden, one time, this girl, you know, she decided that, you know, she wanted to fight me. And I'm saying, why does she want to fight me? I don't even talk to people. I don't even, you know, I'm not in no clique. I'm not in any group, you know. And so when she said that, oh, my God, I just said, oh, God, I can't fight. I don't know how to fight. You know, I wasn't saved, didn't know the Lord either. And I said, I don't really know how to fight. And she was a mean little something, too. I want you to know that. And actually, she was shorter than me, but see, I still didn't know how to fight. And so I remember, you know, I was so afraid, you know, and I can't remember whether I told my sister or not because my sister was really my mentor. I can't remember whether I told her or not. And I said, you know, this girl want to fight me. I don't even know why she want to fight me. I've done nothing. I don't even talk to this girl. I don't even know why she want to fight me. You know, I didn't know that the Lord was training me at that time to be strong, although I might be little. Don't you fool. Don't you fool yourself. And so, so, so... So what happened, you know, I, I fretted over this and I fretted and she just went for weeks and weeks and weeks taunting me, trying to push me down the stairs at school. And it wasn't that I was a brilliant child, you know, on, you know, uh, you know, on, you know, got all A's and all of that. I wasn't. I was just, I just could not understand it. I'm telling you the truth. And so it just, it just, you know, I, the, the fear continued to grow and it continued to grow and it continued to grow. And then one time I had all of my books in my hands. And when I got to a certain part, she pushed me down the steps with all my books. And so something happened inside of me. <laughs> and it wasn't the Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> I didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost <laughs> at that time. And so, you know, I, you know, I didn't get up and fight. I didn't do that. I got up, and I was just so upset. I got my, picked up my books and whatever. But something happened within me. Something happened within me. The next time she did that, see, she pushed me to a point. Oh, God. Well, I had to fight. But I didn't fight with my hands. Let's get that straight. Uh-oh, see, y'all thought I was going to fight with my hands. Y'all were looking for a fight, see? You were looking for a fight. I didn't fight with my hands. And so... She, she, the, the last time she shoved me, and she told me she was going to, she didn't say nice words. After school, I turned around and said, I'll be waiting for you. Right. <laughs> My knees were shaking. <laughs> 
I called her bluff. I said, I'll be waiting for you. And then I said, what did I just do? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm going to die today. <laughs> you see what fear does to you? It makes you, you know, it makes you think that, oh, my goodness, I'm just going to die. I'm going to die right now, you know. And ultimately, I waited after school, and she never showed up. Guess what? She saw something in my eyes. And she saw that I was ready to fight her. Why did I tell you that story? In this story, the Bible says that here you had all these Israelites, the people of God, whom God had promised so many things. And here you had the enemies of God. Every time they got to a point in their lives, you read the story, here comes this giant Goliath challenging them, making them feel, oh, they were fearful. Read the scriptures, they were fearful. But the Bible says that there was a young son. This is why I say to young people, you can be very inspirational, even in the lives of some of us that are older. But we that are older need to be uh, examples for those that are younger. Amen? You can't curse them out and expect them not to curse you back, because some of them will curse you back. Don't do that, young people. Please don't. Please don't. You will shorten your life and you will die quick. Don't do that, okay? But it's amazing. Here they are, ready for battle. And the Bible says that Jesse sent David, said, listen, I need you to go check on your brothers. I need you to take them some food. I want you to make sure that everything is okay with your brothers. So the Bible says he sends David. And isn't it amazing how God started to work in David's life during that time as well as a young lad? Went to check on the brothers to see how everything was going. Because he knew that the Philistines were mean people. I care for the body of Christ. I don't want, you know, the enemy to overtake you. And so the Bible says he goes and he, you know, he uh, brings the delivery to the brothers. But let me just show you, show you something about the story. The Bible says that, as he's approaching, when he gets there, he hears the brothers talking, and all of a sudden, here come Goliath, and he jumps out. And he defies, you know, uh, Israel's God, and then he defies, and he says, I tell you what, send me a man that will fight with me. Send me a man, man that's capable to fight with me. And if I win, then you become servants of the Philistines. If he wins, then we become servants, you know, of Israel. So he says, send me one man and hear little David. That's why I said, don't, don't, you, don't you fool yourself about little small people. Here comes David asking the brother, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's challenging the people of God? Who is he? So, you know, sometimes you've got to, somebody has to stand on the front line and fight sin. Who is he that defies the God? of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who is he? Then look what happens. You know, jealousy always come in when God starts to do things. Here, his oldest brother. Why are you here? False accusations, you know. You, you, you know, you, you're mischievous. You, you just want to see what's going on. No, 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 no. No, 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 bro. Mm -mm. You got it all wrong. Something is wrong here. You are, you know, you're God's people. You know, this uncircumcised giant is threatening the people of God. What do you mean? I'm here to fight. That's why I'm here. Let me do it. Let me fight. Now, I'm going to show you something in a minute. Let me fight. So the Bible says, you know, this giant scared the, the, the uh, uh, Israelites. And they got very, very scared. Here the giant kept threatening them. Come on, don't let nobody threaten you away from God and make you move from God. Come on, stay in your place and fight. Don't let troubles, you know, you know, frighten you and make you move from God. Stay in your place and fight. And so the Bible says, here he keeps threatening. And so David said, I'll do it. Now can you imagine... Now, who, Dave, go back and, you know, brother said, go back and take care of those sheep. You shouldn't be here in the first place. Daddy sent me, Eliab. Daddy sent me. He's the one that sent me. The Bible says, eventually, they were so scared, they said, all right, Saul, you know, David's saying he can do this. 
you know, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Bible says that they took David back to Saul. That time Saul didn't know who David was because even later on, you know, Saul gets jealous of David. You don't have to be jealous of anybody. Do, your, do what God tells you to do. The Bible says they took him to Saul. And Saul says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to gird you because this is a giant. I mean, this giant is almost 10 feet tall. As a matter of fact, you know, his, his coat of mail, you know, weighs, you know, 125 pounds. And the spear, you know, the little head on the spear, you know, is about 15 pounds. If it hits you, his statement is certainly going to take you out. David said, what well, I care? I can fight him because I got more than swords. I got more than, you know, a, a lot of mouth and a lot of fists. You know, I've got the Lord on my side. That's who's going to fight with me. So the Bible says, Saul tried to put all this heavy armor on David. Can you imagine, I'm just going to infer, David trying to move with all this heavy, you know, this heavy armor on him. After a while, the Bible says, he said, listen, I can't, I can't fight with all this stuff on me. You know, I, I can't fight with all this stuff on me. I can't fight. Listen, you've got to cast these burdens. You can't fight with all this stuff on you. All the weights of sin and all the burdens. Dump this stuff. Get rid of this stuff. He says, I can't fight. He said, I tell you what. That's all right. I got the right thing. He told Saul, listen, when I was, you know, when I was taking care of the sheep, I killed a lion and a bear. I killed them, you know, with my bare hands. Pastor, you can't, you can't kill Sam with your bare hands. I sure can. I can kill him on my knees. I can do that. The Bible says that David said, all right, okay. Got himself prepared. The Bible says, now listen to this, look at the scripture. He ran toward the Philistine, Goliath. He ran toward him. Can you imagine? Wow, I should have had my sack and my rock. That's what I should have had. I, I forgot. I didn't get that. So I'll tell you what. You, you just got to get angry enough with the enemy. Reached in his little sack, ran towards Goliath. We're just talking today, right? We're just talking. I'm not preaching. What? Goliath says, you, you know, and I, dog, you know, little boy, you know, little boy, come on, you know, you're dealing with me. David, I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to defeat you in the name of the Lord. I got the Lord on my side. I got him on my side. That's how I'm going to defeat you. I'm not going to defend and prove a thing. I'm not going to fight with what you say. I'm not going to fight with what you do. I'm just going to do it the Lord's way. Yeah. Bible said he reached in that little sack ran toward Goliath, and he knew exactly how to hit him in the right spot. The Bible said he took that sling and that stone, hit him right in the forehead. You, you can't fool around with it. You got to hit him where to take him out. You got to hit him where it'll take him out, and I won't get too graphic, okay? Hit him, and the Bible says he fell to the ground. And of course, you know the rest of the story of what David had to do just as he said. But my point is, it took David to encourage the army. It took David to encourage the army to fight. So that's why I said, let's fight this thing together. When someone offends your brother and your sister, don't go in with them and fight against them. Tell them I don't want to talk about them. I don't want to be mean to them. Tell them, no, that's my brother, that's my sister. We worship together, we go to church together, we pray together, we fast together. Fight! The Bible said, of course, now he'd already killed the giant, now here come the rest of the soldiers. Okay. Here come the rest, of, but that's good, that's fine. Because they needed to be with him. They needed to be with him. After he killed the giant, then the Bible says, they too fled after the Philistines, and they killed those Philistines. They destroyed the enemy. And not only that, the Bible says that they defeated the enemy, and they, they, they received the spoils, and they divided the spoils. And, you know, I, if I could give the congregation homework, I would let you do research on what are the spoils. Because there's a lot of wealth in the spoils. 
when God takes it from the enemy and gives it to the believer. So how are we going to fight this? We're going to fight this by, one, realizing that we're all in this together. And we all can play a part in fighting sin and the enemy. We all can play a vital part. Now, we say we love each other, but we've got to show it more. Amen? That's what we say. Okay? So we all play an important part. Everybody needs to take a part in it. And so those that perhaps aren't on the front line, you can be at least uh, be praying for the mission. Or for those who feel that, you know, they don't have the courage yet to do certain things, pray for the mission. Pray. Pray that our objectives will be met. Pray. Let's fight this thing together. Let's do this. All right? And I'm just about finished, and I'm going to let you go. I'm trying to get you all out at 1 o'clock in the summertime. Let me just share this with you quickly, and we're ready to go. I want us to fight, not against each other, but I want, to fight. I want us to fight together. Let me just share this with you right quick. Because we're dealing with a lot of things, and I'm telling you all, and I keep saying it, and it's just in my spirit, it's just really in my spirit, okay? Remember, David told the brother, I came for a cause. And so we must understand that there's a cause, there's a reason why we do what we do. And that is that the world might be saved. So let's not fight each other, let's fight sin so the world can be saved. Amen. Okay? And so what we must do, we must understand that uh, we must have a heart of a common cause. A heart of a common cause. We're all trying to get to heaven. Am I right or wrong? We all are trying to get there. And so let's not destroy anybody else on our, on our journey. Okay? And then we can pray together. We really can pray together. We have the tent crusade coming up. We need to be in prayer. Our prayer counselors, I know they're on it. Our minister council, I know you're on it. You know, we don't have time to be too busy with other things that we cannot be praying and fasting for the tent crusade. Amen? But not only that, or sin in the camp. Amen? And so we must understand there must be a common cause. We've got, to, we've got to get our causes together. And then we must understand that we can really give moral support to each other when we falter or when we fail. Give moral support. Amen? You know, give moral support and perhaps material support. Sometimes it is financially. Sometimes there is a financial need. I'm not saying that people use you, but I'm saying sometimes there is a financial need. And so I'm ready for us to fight. I'm telling you right now, oh my goodness, I feel like, I feel like fighting. I feel like fighting. I feel like tearing down something. And that's Satan's kingdom. And we're going to do it. Are we going to do this together? Amen. 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 So David was one. He was solemnly determined to win that battle. Two, he had unwavering confidence that he could win the battle. Unwavering. Pastor, that's impossible. No, it isn't. It's in the scripture all the time. Unwavering confidence. Win your battles. And then he had invisible armor. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord, y'all don't hear me. He had invisible army. Had an invisible army. I'm telling you, Reverend Moore, your angels are fighting for me every day. And I know that. I know that. And then finally, they had a decided victory. They decided they all were going to win this battle. That's exactly what they did. They won the battle. 